Hi and welcome to another video of Made by Seam. Today I'm going to show you how you can crochet the bubble stitch. But for now I don't see it to do just stitch tutorials. Um, it's the same for me as you know going on my bicycle. Yeah I live in the Netherlands so I go on the bicycle like quite a lot. Uh, and just do it for cycling not just I need a purpose. Now that's the same with crocheting for me. If I crochet something, if I want to learn you how to do a specific stitch, I want you to be able to make a, a project out of it. So therefore I decided that I wanted to do a pot holder or whatsoever. Now, know that you can use this pattern um, for your blankets. I won't just do, do it I probably as big as you want it, but not the, th and the extra thick one. Um, if you want to make a um, cushion pillow, um, a pillowcase, that's it, a pillowcase, um, you do it in the same way. You obviously just need more yarn. Uh, you need more bubble stitches. Um, for example, this one is 19 centimeters. If you need one, uh, that is 40 centimeters wide, you need three extra and a little bit of extra yarn. So this was, is what I had left. So I would go for five strands of yarn, um, five skeins of yarn of the double four. But um, as I haven't done it myself, I'm not quite sure uh, if that is the right amount. Just you have to calculate it yourself, okay? Um, be sure that whenever you buy yarn, uh, you have enough. Because this stitch, this lovely beautiful stitch, is a true yarn eater. It is. Alright, um, I know there are a lot of videos out there that have uh, the bubble stitches for a pop holder. Um, but just be sh you know, I just wanted to do the stitch and make a project out of it to learn and show you guys um, yeah, how to do so. And if you want to make something else, if you want to make it into a um, double thick purse and per, um, bag or purse, then just don't sew this last piece together, but just do a, a border just around um, the both sides and you have an opening or if you want to make it into a um, sleeve for your um, laptop so you you can use it for so many different things um, I just made it into a, um, a pot holder a hot rack um, something to get you know uh, your um, sleigh out of the oven that's the main reason why I decided to put it into a pot holder. But basically it is just a nothing else than um, a how to make a bubble stitch tutorial. Okay. So if you like the video, please do not forget to give me that thumbs up. Uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And um, thank you guys. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy watching the video. Well, this is what I'm going to use for my hot rack pot holder uh, thingy to get some things out of the oven. I don't know how that is called. Because um, usually there are, you use mittens to get something out of the oven, right? Um, but this one is, it's so super thick, um, even my hubby told me um, that he really likes them, because uh, I made one before, uh, he really likes them and therefore I decided to make a tutorial, so um, yeah, you can all make them, you can all make this beautiful one. Well, um, and this is what I'm going to use for this tutorial. It's a Dutch brand called Durable or Durable. Uh, it's the double four, but you can use, um, if you cannot find this, you can use any 100% cotton yarn with a medium worsted weight four. 
Um, this is a 100 gram skein and it has 150 meters uh, to work with um, and this sp specific color is 402 seagrass. Um, but like I said, you can use any worsted weight uh, medium for yarn, cotton yarn. I would highly recommend to use cotton yarn for your stuff in the kitchen and if you put something like really hot on there if, or if you get something out of the oven, please use 100% cotton yarn. Now, I'm going to use a five and a half millimeter crochet hook and a five millimeter crochet hook. Now, if you do have a really tight tension, I would like to suggest to use a six millimeter and a five and a half millimeter. Then a darning needle, a, a stitch marker. I always like to use um, tape measure. <clears throat> I'm sorry, tape measure. Um, and I'm gonna let you guys know how wide this one is. It's a 19 centimeters, should do that side. Uh, 19 centimeters by 19 centimeters, which is, let me turn it around, seven and a half inch inches. Seven and a half inches. And of course, a pair of scissors. And um, one skein, one of this skein, one of these skeins, uh, is enough for one hot rack pot holder. Something to get a thingy that you need when you need to get something out of the oven. <laughs> Don't know how that's called. Um, so one is one, All right? 150 meters worsted weight for yarn, cotton yarn. Right, so I'm um, starting off with the uh, bigger hook of the two, the five and the five and a half I have. So I'm starting off with the five and a half millimeter. Um, start off with a slip knot on your hook. This is how I do it, but you know, um, every everyone has a different way to make the slip knot. Do as you prefer, okay? Now, um, we start off with a chain of 22 for the size that I want. If you like to have it bigger, then be sure that you have a um, stitch count in a multiple of two. Um, but then you will need, definitely, you will need more yarn, okay? Well, for my size, I want 22 chains. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, until I have 22. All right, so I did a chain of 22. And right, now, um, we're going to make a single crochet row um, and we start off with a um, single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Now the chain, the, um, now before you start, take your hook out and get your smaller hook, half a size smaller, and start off by working into the second chain from the hook. This is our first one, and this is the second. It's just a, I pulled it a little tighter. See, that actually was a stitch. There you go. See, I I just can see it a little bit better. One, two. The loop and hook never counts as a stitch. So go into the second one. Yarn over. Grab your yarn. Pull through two loops and a hook, yarn over and pull through two. If you like to use a stitch marker, then place your stitch marker into the first stitch. There you go. Now, in every stitch of this row, we need a single crochet. So, insert your hook, grab your yarn, yarn over and pull through two. That is all you need to do 
for this row. Now, if you um, want to make a blanket or if you want to make a towel with this stitch, um, know that the, the, this uh, stitch, not this stitch, but the stitch we're going to do the next row, it is a yarn eater. It's a yarn eater. It's a thick, beautiful stitch that you can use for a lot of things. Um, but it is a yarn eater, just so be sure that you have enough. It's super, super pretty for a pillowcase. Um, so many, you can use it for so, so many things. If you need help with ideas, let me know and I'll see if I can work something out or show you the way where you can find it or yeah well uh, almost at the very end while I'm talking get myself some yarn there you go at the very end you should have 21 single crochet stitches okay now chain one turn your work and here is your very first stitch. This, the last stitch of the previous row is the first stitch of your new row. This is your first stitch. Stitch. Insert your hook, grip your yarn, yarn over and pull through two. So another single crochet. Now in the next stitch, we're going to make our bubble stitch. Yarn over. Insert your hook, grab your yarn, pull through, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two. This is actually, actually this is actually a half a, it's not half a double crochet, but it is half of a double crochet. So you're, it is a not finished double crochet. Because if you should yarn over and pull through two, you have a finished off double crochet. Okay, so let me do that again because I ripped it, frogged it. There you go. So yarn over again. Now you have three loops on the hook. Insert your hook, grab your yarn, pull through, yarn over and pull through two. Three loops on the hook. Yarn over, insert your hook, grab your yarn. Yarn over and pull through two. Four loops on the hook. You did three unfinished double crochet stitches. Yarn over, insert your hook in the same stitch, grab your yarn, yarn over and pull through two. Now you have four not finished half double crochet, uh, sorry, four not finished double crochet stitches. And one, two, three, four, five loops on the hook. Now yarn over and pull through all five loops. Just wiggle it if you find it hard. And there it is. Now make a single crochet in the next stitch. Insert your hook, grab your yarn, yarn over and pull through two. And as you can see, if you turn your work over, you can see the bubble on this side. So we did our first bubble stitch. Next, a bubble stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook, grab your yarn, yarn over, pull through two. That is one. Yarn over, insert your hook, grab your yarn, yarn over, pull through two. Two. Yarn over. Three. Four. One, two, three, four, five loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through all five. And now the bubble stitch. And to secure the bubble stitch so you will actually have a bubble, you crochet a single crochet in the next stitch. There you go. Now you have two bubbles. See? Let's do that one more time. Yarn over. Insert your hook in the next stitch. One. Two. 
two. Three. Four. Yarn over and pull through all loops, all of the loops on your hook. And to secure your uh, bowl, single crochet in the next stage. Now we did three bubbles. This is what you need to do all the way across and your last stitch of the row should be a single crochet stitch. Um, I will see you guys at the very end of this row. At the very end of this uh, row there should be one stitch left after you did your bubble stitch. Then insert your hook, grab your yarn and make your single crochet. There you go. So the last stitch of the round should be a single crochet. Now chain one, turn your work and we will be working into each stitch of the previous row. Now the first one is right there. It's not hard to find. There it is, here. So single crochet in there. Now the second and the third one are right next to each other. Here we have the big loop or the big stitch that we use to close the vowel stitch. Then is the stitch we're going for. So it's right there. See? There. The next stitch is right next to that. Right there. Single crochet. This is a single crochet row. The next one. You see it? Here and here. And this is what you do all the way across and in the end if you have the same stitch count that I have you should have 21 single crochet stitches so they're right next to each other here the one from the bubble stitch and here is the one from the single crochet stitch bubble look now I um, did something wrong. Can you see it? I went through my yarn. So be sure that you go into the corner there, grab your yarn, and now I didn't go through the yarn but in the actual stitch. There you go. single crochets for this row there you go almost at the very end okay um the last stitch of the row is also of course a single crochet now um when this is like the first time you're crocheting this i would suggest to count the stitches as um, you should have 21 single crochet if you did the same stitch count as I did of as I am doing I did in the beginning right uh, chain one turn your work and basically we're just going to repeat row two and row three um, until we have enough rows so I did a chain one and turn my work and into the first one this is the repetition a single crochet and in the next stitch a bubble stitch one two three four chain one and pull through all and secure it with a single crochet so if you came this far I know you can do the bubble stitch 
and I will see you guys at the very end of the row. So this is just a repetition um, of row two. Three, four, and single crochet in the next. Right? I will see you guys at the very end of the row. Almost at the end of the row. Do not forget the last single crochet at the very end of the row. Now, the next one, a repetition of row number three, is a chain one, turn your work, a single crochet row. Single crochet in the first. Then number two and number three are right now there right next to each other. Two and three. Let's get this and there are number four and five. So it is a repetition of row number three. Um, and I'm sure you can do it. If you came uh, as far as I am, you can do it. So this row is a complete single crochet row. The row after that one is a um, bubble stitch row. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bubbles. I have ten bubbles like this and we need ten bubbles in height. I'm going to show you. As you can see, it's a square. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So, um, please go on and make your uh, swatch your um, piece. And uh, as soon as you have 10 bubbles ending with a single crochet row, so you need 10 bubbles and then a single crochet row. And as soon as you did that, then um, go come back to the video and I'm going to tell you what to do next. Um, we need two of these, so but I'm going to tell you uh, what we need to do after you have your 10 bubbles uh, in height um, and a single crochet row. All right? I'll see you guys um, in the next clip. I'm at the very end of a row number um, 21. Um, we have 10 bubbles this way and we have 10 bubbles that way. And you should end with a row of single crochet stitches. Looking at the good side of your work, this is the wrong side, this is the good side. The good side is the side where you see the bubbles. So. Uh, what we're going to do now is just turn it a little to the side because we're going to uh, crochet single crochet stitches all the way around. And a lot of times that is like really difficult, but I'm going to show you that it is actually not that difficult in this pattern. Um, chain one. We're going to work a single crochet two single crochet stitches in the corner. This is a corner stitch um, and this actually is the last stitch of the uh, previous uh, row. Okay, So we're going to work in that stitch. One and like I said two single crochet stitches. I like to mark my first single crochet there you go. Now, on the side you see stitches, you see rows, you see spaces. I'm going to show you that here is a space, there is a space, there is a little space, and there is a little space. We're going to skip the first small space. We're going to skip that one we're going to work in the next one, which is a little bit of a bigger space, this one. One single crochet. Then the next space is a small space, here, single crochet. A bigger space, 
single crochet. A smaller space, a single crochet. So we just alternate the single crochets in the bigger and the smaller spaces that we see. See? And basically what you're doing is one single crochet per row. Um, overall, uh, not counting the corner stitches, so this is the quarter. We have two stitches in this quarter already. Um, later on there will be three. Now here we have another corner. There will be three single crochets into that corner. Uh, I'm going to show you later. But in between we have 19 rows left. So 21 rows in total. Corners minus 2 is 19. So on this side we should have 19 single crochet stitches. So please continue working as we just did in the bigger and the smaller holes. Spaces. I should say spaces, I guess. Um, until you are at the very end of the um, this side. And then you should have 19 single crochets. I'll see you guys right there. I need to film Dutch as well. Okay, I'm at the uh, end of this side and in my next stitch, or the next stitch is a corner stitch and it is pretty close to the previous stitch, but that's no problem at all. So work three single crochet into that stitch, in that corner stitch. And as I'm not a big fan of weaving in yarn ends, um, I'm going to work over this um, beginning strand of yarn and this yarn tail. Because we're going to work one single crochet in each stitch of the bottom. Um, and in between the two corners there should be, again, 19 stitches. One, two, three, four, and so on, five, six, seven, I'll see you guys at the end here, where we need to crochet another corner. Alright, um, I did again 19 single crochet stitches and here I am at the corner. Um, we need 3 single crochets into the corner. 1, 2 and 3. Now, I have been crocheting over my um, yarn tail. Um, now you can cut the last piece off, just pull it a little, cut it off and stretch it and it disappears in your work, which is good. All right then, um, we're ready again to work over this side. Now remember that on this side, we skipped the first stitch um, and on this side we're going to skip the last one right there. Um, so the first stitch is here. You see here this uh, space and um, there goes one single crochet in it. Then here you have the second one. If you pull your bubble stitch a little you can see it. Here, here's another one, here's a bigger one, small one, bigger one, small one, bigger one. Hope you can see it. So, again, we're going to alternate um, the bigger and the smaller holes that we find, or smaller spaces that we can find. Um, 
and at the very end, before um, the third, the fourth corner, this is the first, second, third, and the fourth corner, you should have uh, 19 single crochet stitches again. If you have 20, you did one too much. Um, and I would highly recommend to uh, find out where you did um, the extra one because we're going to make two of these pieces and we're going to crochet them together. So you want them both to be exactly the same, okay? So again, we're almost at the corner. Um, hang in there. Counting the stitches, we have a one, two, three in the corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and a nineteen. Look. This is where you're going to skip it. This is the space you're going to skip. Now, the next one is right there. It is the first stitch here. It's just a, a regular single crochet stitch. We're going to crochet three single crochets in there. One, two, three. And then we're turning to this side. Again, one stitch in each stitch across until you are at the corner. When I'm at the corner, I'll be back to show you guys what to do next. All right, um, I did my 19 single crochet and then I already took my stitch marker out. Here is the very first stitch where we did the two single crochet in the corner. Um, we need three, so I'm going to add in the same stitch, I'm adding one single crochet. Then in the first single crochet of this round, a slip stitch and a chain one. Now, if this is your first square, get your yarn, leave a little bit of a tail end and cut it off. But you need two. So if this is your second one, like mine, um, then um, don't cut your yarn because we're just using it to crochet the two pieces together. All right? See you guys in the next clip. Okay. Um, what I did in my Dutch video, um, I placed stitch markers in the middle stitch, the center stitch of the corners. I'm going to explain you why. Um, we're going to crochet these pieces together. Now, when I did my, um, uh, this one, the first one, actually the second one, because this one is slightly bigger. Uh, I made this one about a year or a year and a half ago. Um, my hubby, my husband to be, my hubby, loves it two pieces but the yarn I'm using um, um, doesn't have as much meters or yards to make it as big as this one so for me and for me I have uh, I don't have like really small hands but I found out that this one is for me is just too big so I made it smaller and I think this one for me is like perfect and I could do it out of one skein of the double four. So um, what I found out is when I was crocheting them together, um, you're, every time you're looking for the right stitch in the corner. Now to make things easier, it is wise to mark the center stitch of the corner. So get yourself about eight stitch markers. I know I showed one in the um, material list, but um, I think I changed it. Uh, I did the text for it and said you need eight. Um, so in each corner there are one, two, three stitches. One, two, three. You need the second stitch. 
So mark off every second stitch of the corner. One, two, three. Yep. One, two, three. And last but not least, I don't like working in my ends, so I'm also on this one I'm crocheting over the yarn tail. Um, be sure that you do this with both of your squares, right? Uh, see you guys in the next clip where we're actually going to crochet the two pieces together. Alright, I have stitch markers in each corner. Now, um, be sure that you have both of your squares um, right in front, front of you in the same way. So, this is my good side, this is my good side. This is the side where my um, bubble stitches um, are facing up and this is in the same way. My um, yarn tail is right there. If you're left-handed, for me it's on the left side. If you're left-handed, it should be on the right side. Okay. Um, the same as where you are here in the, in the corner and with the skein of yarn attached to your work. Now, what you do, you turn this one over like you're turning over a page of a book, just like that. So, not like that but like this, you're turning over a page. Now you're looking at the inside of your work. Get this uh, square and place it on top of this one. So now on both sides you have your stitches up, um, in the same way and on both sides the, you're looking, you are looking at the good side. Right, okay, here is my second square. We need to start at, uh, attaching the ones together, uh, crocheting the two pieces together. Um, you already did the chain one. If you haven't done that already, please make a chain one and insert your hook in the same stitch as where you just closed it. And that should be where you close the round. And this should be the middle st stitch, the centered stitch, the second stitch of the corner. Insert it right there. Now, on the other side, there is a stitch marker. Place your stitch marker into the... Uh, place your crochet hook into the stitch where the stitch marker is. Then, take the stitch marker out. Yarn over pull through both stitches, yarn over and pull through two. Now you have crocheted these two pieces together, look. See? Right, place your stitch marker back into the first stitch, there you go. Now for the corner we need another stitch, another single crochet in the same stitch. So crochet another single crochet in that same stitch. Now for this side we need to crochet these stitches together. That should be 21 stitches. So be sure that you have the right stitch or the right stitches and make single crochets to crochet them together. If you are more familiar with this, you probably want to line them up um, to so it can go a little bit faster. But be sure that you don't forget or you don't skip stitches. This is all you need to do until you are at the corner stitch right there. So, I will see you guys as soon as I'm here. Good luck with that. Alright, 
I did my 21 um, single crochet. Be sure that you have 21 single crochet. Now in the next one, in the corner, there is my stitch marker. I'm taking the stitch marker out and placing my crochet hook into that stitch. And the one on the back side, I'm gonna stick. Uh, I'm gonna put my um, crochet hook in there first, and then taking the stitch marker out, grab my strand of yarn, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. Now do that again. Make another single crochet because this is a corner, and we need three single crochet into the corner. Second one and my third one. There you go. Now turn it around and check if it looks good. Well, all three stitches are in the same stitch, so I did well. Now, again, don't forget this stitch here. Um, this one is, well, you can forget that one easily. So insert your hook there go to the stitch on the from the second um, piece and single crochet and again on this side you should have a 21 single crochet stitches before you are at the center stitch of the corner um, please keep going on we need three single crochets in this corner then 21 stitches over on this side, sewing them together. And as soon as you're here, this is your first corner, your second corner, your third corner, your fourth corner, because we started off with a corner, so this is your fourth corner. Uh, as soon as you're here, um, I'll be, I'm going to put the camera back on and I'm going to show you how to, um, how to create this hanging loop because I like the, the, to hang them in my kitchen. Um, and um, yeah, I'm gonna show you how you can create this. Okay, if you don't want that, then just keep going on. So the next stitch, there is the stitch marker. Take that stitch marker out. And there you go, place your um, hook in there. Then on the other side, place your stitch marker into that space where the stitch marker is. Take the stitch marker out and then single crochet. So I did one and now we need our loop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then we're going back into the same spot and make another single crochet. So this is your loop. And in this corner, you just have the two single crochet and the loop. So no, th no not three single crochet. Okay. And then you keep going on working in each of the next 21 stitches on both sides by crocheting one single crochet in um, to attach them, the two pieces together. I'll see you guys as soon as I'm here. All right, I'm at the very first corner, at the end of the round. Um, now here you see a little piece of yarn. This looks like there is an, another stitch. Actually, there isn't, because this is the slip stitch of the previous round. Okay, here's your first single crochet, here's your second single crochet, and this space right there this is the space we need to work in. Not this one, but this one. So insert your hook in that space, yarn over and make your single crochet. Now, there are multiple ways of closing off the round. 
I'm going to take the stitch marker out. If you want to do the invisible closing, which I'm not going to do in this video, uh, I'm going to do that one in another video. So I want to learn you guys uh, something new in every single video. Um, or something else in every single video. Um, we need to close off the round. Do as you prefer. Um, um, slip stitching into the first single crochet at the beginning of the round, just like that. And usually you will do another chain one to secure it. But as you get a little bit of an extra bump on your corner right there, um, which you don't have on all the other corners, I don't really like it. So I decided that after doing the slip stitch, I'm going to cut off my yarn with a little bit of a tail end. I'm pulling it through and I'm just being sure that I'm going to sew it in very well. Um, here is the little piece of strand that I just worked over. So I'm pulling it a little, cutting it off, stretching it a little and it disappears. If you like to do it in a different way, feel free, do it as you prefer. It is your pot holder, your hot rack, it is your thingy to get things out of the oven. It's all up to you, I'm just showing you how you can do things, right? Okay, so on the back side of my work, underneath a couple of stitches, I like to work in my yarn end. Well, that's about it. I finished mine and I'm pretty pleased with how they came out, how they turn out. I love, love, love them. Like I told you guys at the very beginning of the video, you can use this uh, pattern for a lot of things. Um, you can use it for a, a pillow case. Uh, you can use it to make a bag, uh, a blanket. Um, you can use it for a towel, um, hot rack pot holders, or whatever you like. Um, just do so. Use it as you prefer. Um, I would really like it if you could show um, your items with this stitch that you made from this video. Um, and, and you're more than welcome to join our Facebook group Made by Seam Headquarters. The main language in our group is Dutch because I'm Dutch and um, it's easier for me to commu communicate in Dutch. But you're more than welcome and luckily Facebook does do the translation for you guys. Um, then um, we're also on um, Instagram. So if you make yours, then please do not forget to um, tag us on Instagram, Made by Seam. So please do not forget to tag us. Um, thank you so, so much for your support. I really, really appreciate you guys all. Um, and yeah, um, thank you for watching. And if you're going to make yours, um, if you're going to watch another video of mine, Please do not forget to enjoy, stay safe, stay healthy, and thank you for all your support. Bye for now. And as I'm not really into just doing uh, stitch uh, tutorials, Maybe I'm going to do that later on, but for now I don't see any reason at all not to do the um, video uh, to my tutorial. If you like it, please do not forget to subscribe to my to, to my YouTube channel. Well, um, please enjoy watching the video. If you like it, please do not forgive, forget to give me that so seam. And, um, well, I, I will have to tell you something else before we go on. Um, I know there are a lot of uh, the bubble stitch um, uh, hot rack spot holders are on the internet. Um, but 
actually I wanted to go for a little swatch uh, of the bubble stitch uh, to learn you guys how to do it um, but I, I found out that for me that doesn't work because it feels a little bit of a, a waste of yarn so therefore uh, I, and I love my yarn um, so therefore I decided that I wanted to really make something with the stitch okay so then you know how to do it and then make something with it that you can actually use or give away as a gift or for um, uh, Christmas or you know whenever you need a present you need something pretty for that you handmade um, so it is useful in more ways than just learning the stitch okay all right here are my two squares and I have stitch markers in each of the four corners four corners <coughs> Coffee it is. Hmm. 